I've got $91 million I gotta spend, and in this video, we're spending half of it. We're buying a trophy shopping center, and you get to come along and buy it with us. So we sold our property, it's in a 1031, and we can't touch the money. You know why? Because you gotta reinvest it. A broker called us up, he put a couple of deals in front of us, we went out and looked at two big shopping centers. Where's little Bernhardt? It's nine o'clock. There he is. He's late as usual. Probably had to stop and get himself a Egg McMuffin with sausage. I'm not in a good fucking mood today. Trying to buy a shopping center in Tampa. They don't want to give me a discount. They haven't taken care of the goddamn place. They got vacancies and they still want top dollar. So we're gonna get on a plane today and we're gonna go look at some retail shopping centers. And I'm getting sick and tired of his big shot attitude. Because lately, he's been acting like a big shot. Going out buying Corvettes, you know? He says, I can't talk to you, I mean dinner. He's turned into a big shot. And I'm not in a good fucking mood, and I'm depressed, so I hope we don't get into a big fucking fight today. Because I'm ready to fucking throw in the towel and retire. I don't really need to be here today, do I? I don't really need to be here today. Your skin ain't thick today or what? I'm just, how bad of a mood are you? I mean, are you in one of those moods today? Yeah, I'm very depressed. I didn't have a lot of sleep last night. Oh, no, now we didn't have a lot of sleep. All right, smoke a cigarette and let's go, because I want today to get going, going, going. Smoke a cigarette. I'll have another one with you. How about that? Let's have a morning cigarette together. Here we go. Going to work. First class flying. Look at that. He's sitting in first class right now. Eating a fucking Wawa sandwich, comfortable seat, air conditioning over his fucking head. Where the fuck else are you gonna get a job to provide that? Yesterday, he got a whole day's pay for taking a nice drive around town. Everybody should get only get half pay while they're driving. Yeah, right. Take that shit up with the labor, the board of labor. They get to start the clock the moment they get in their car and start driving. Yeah, but 99% of our employees Take off whenever the fuck they want. Don't keep track of vacations. Take a million days sick leave. Don't even fucking come to work after time. And we get bullshitted. So who we can, we're too fucking nice. That's the problem. That's always been my problem. Let's take a walk, get a feel for this place. Come on. How much are you asking for this place? I don't know. I think it's only around five million bucks. And there's a reason why. <laughs> we know where she used to work. The way this is set up, I mean, it's very easy to cam out because this building should have its own tax bill. Oh, Man, they, they, they got too much space. Yeah, it looks they, rough, they, too. they used to be a sit down. Diana, it's closed. The first older one didn't really tickle my fancy. I didn't feel it. When you go to these properties, you got to feel it. You got to feel the customers, the stores are doing good, people are making money. You don't want to go somewhere where nobody's making money because then you're not making money. And unfortunately, when we went to that plaza, I didn't feel like they were making money. So we got food places, which is good. You got Chinese food, you got a coffee shop, you got Italian food. We got necessities. These are things you can't live without. These are Ben's Jr.'s necessities. Pizza, calzone, stromboli, pasta, wings, paninis. He's in heaven. Look, everybody's coming out looking at you guys. Okay, so we got a hairstyling here. We like we're open if they want to come in with us. I don't trust you guys. Now, we're just looking around, we're inspecting the property. But we might stop in for lunch later. All right, we're gonna be here. All right, we'll be here, right from Brooklyn. Long Island! When the people in the stores come outside to have to try to bring you in, that's a sign things are slow. I mean, common sense, let's be honest. We might stop in and grab uh, something from you, sugar-free. You got sugar-free? It's got nine grams of sugar. Nine grams? That'll kill me. I've never been to a shopping center where people run out like that. I mean, we're just walking around. Yes, you got a camera, but still. Hey! Hey, baby! <laughs> They're friendly here. She trying to park here? Yes. Sorry, 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 sorry. Come on, we're in the way. 
Let's go. Sorry. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. We're invested in real estate, but let's be a little diversified. This part of the episode is sponsored by Masterworks, where you can invest in fine art. We've been talking about crashes all month. After all, the S&P 500 just wrapped up its worst year since the 2008 crisis. And Bank of America is warning that it could flatline this year. Flatline. The market's demanding a much more active approach. And Masterworks has already been helping over 600,000 people take control. They've been featured in financial publications like Business Insider and Financial Times and recently awarded one of LinkedIn's top 50 startups. Their CEO, Scott Lynn, has been interviewed dozens of times both on CNBC and the Florida Stock Exchange. Why? Because from Masterworks office in downtown Manhattan, their team delivered tens of millions in returns last year by revolutionizing art investing. Initially, I was skeptical too, but contemporary arts appreciation has even outpaced the S&P 500 for the last 26 years straight. And Masterworks doesn't do tokens or digital assets. You're investing in real physical paintings, qualified with the SEC. They filed over 200 paintings, ranging from $500,000 to $20 million. And while many have been panic selling or dip buying, Masterworks paid out over $25 million last year. That includes three sales just in the last 60 days, which returned 10, 13, and 35% net of fees to their investors. Fine art doesn't have to be your entire strategy. But the news around it is, as a diversifier, is exciting. I haven't found a better way to enter the art market than Masterworks. And if you want to check them out, I left the link below. Thanks, Masterworks, for sponsoring this video. Uh, you know, overall, you know, it, it wasn't that great to me, so we passed on that. But the other one we looked at, baby, was like new money. This is it? Yeah. Wow. Oh, this looks like a brand new fucking place. Barber Lounge. This is what you want to buy. Ice Spot. Little Greek. Lash Lounge. That's a Winn-Dixie liquor store right there. The bank comes with it. Is it on the rent roll? What's the name of it? Yeah. That does. Snovis. That All fitness. That. How big is that fucking fitness? That's yours too. Where's there a first watch at? Oh my god, it's more shit over here. Man, that means all this is common area. Look at this road. You gotta maintain this road. Does it come with the Dunkin' Donuts? Yeah. Ale, bar, yep, shit. All that. Why are you gonna do a fucking drive through? Drink. Come on. Well, well, it'd be easy. Wouldn't it? I'm not getting coffee. I'm not getting no sugar drain. So what the fuck are you going to Dunkin' Donuts for? Oh, you don't drink iced coffee no more? I don't know. She needs some water. I, mean, I thought it was a good idea. Thanks, man. Yeah, I, I was looking forward to that. Then go through the fucking drive. Oh, my God. This guy just built this big, giant shopping center in a great growing neighborhood. He built brand new apartments right on site. So you have an immediate customer base for the tenants. And everything just felt good there. Everything was fresh. We don't need to put no money in it. Not even the landscaping. We didn't do nothing. The guy's selling us a true turnkey project in a growing, thriving area. So I told Ben Jr., right up an LOI. It's sugar. It's like an ongoing thing. It's real. Like I just got done eating lunch on this fucking desk right here, okay? So my dad said, Junior, write an LOI. 11 things. Where's the property at? How much I'm buying it for? Who's buying it? Who's selling it? When are we going to go into contract? How much deposit am I going to put down? How long of a due diligence period am I going to have? Is there any contingencies or anything that I want that has to do with title? Make sure it's clear. Financing contingency. How am I buying it? Am I buying it cash? Do I got to go get a loan from the bank? Do I need time to do that? And that's fine. You can have that. What date am I going to close? 45 days from effective date, 30 days from effective date, and then 11, always make it confidential. This is between you and the owner and maybe your broker, okay? You don't need him going out and telling the world that he's got an LOI from you at this price. I put in terms that say that he will not enter into any agreement with anybody else in these 30 days until we have a purchase and sale agreement. 
and then it's simple. Sign it, make sure there's a place for them to sign it, send it to them, and hopefully get it back with a signature. And if not, at least you get it back with something scratched off, okay? Instead of 50 million, maybe they put 70 million. And then you write it back and you scratch it off again and you put 55 million, okay? And you guys just go back and forth on that one piece of paper. On a hotel we're buying out right now, that LOI was scratched up eight times. It went back and forth over months. But that is how you do an LOI. Ben Mallet Jr. style, baby. Ben Jr. wrote an LOI on a number that we attempted to buy the property at. Do we think he was gonna accept it? We prayed, but he didn't. He came back with his number. Then we came back with our number. And we played, you know, the game basically to find a meeting point. And when you're up in the big numbers like we were, it means a lot. A million bucks is a lot of money. Went back and forth probably about four times on the price. Our clock was ticking, we needed a property, we liked the property, and we came to a meeting place with the seller. Then we did our due diligence. We're getting ready to get on a plane and we're going to look at the single biggest purchase we've ever made. It's the largest shopping center we've ever bought and we're gonna go inspect it and make sure everything's right. AC's not working. Everything else is working, right? I mean, you know. We want to verify square footage, verifying occupancy. We want to check on the roof, make sure there's no damage or anything like that. We want to check the fire systems, just make sure they're all clear and not red tagged. How people get hot water, is, is it common? Just look at everything, really. <clears throat> this property has approximately 33 tenants. So it's a lot of tenants, and it's a, like a one-stop place to come where people can come here and pretty much satisfy a lot of their needs. They need a haircut, they need their nails done, they need coffee, they need food, they need to cook food, they need groceries, they gotta go work out after they eat. I mean, it's got all the essentials that you're gonna wanna see in a shopping plaza. The name brand right there, Dunkin' Donuts, even has a drive-thru. That's good investment. It's essential. People have to have donuts. This is not one of my favorites, and the reason why is, you guys, you can see, it's vacant because it was a mattress store. How many people got to go out and buy a mattress today? I don't know, but this place is in a hot location, and it should be no problem re-renting this space. This right here will be value add because it's not making any money right now but it will when it gets rented. Before you buy a property, especially commercial, you have to hire, what do you do? Environmental assessment. Environmental assessment services. We call Matt out, he comes out here, he does all his homework on the property, he researches what used to be here, what's here now, and he evaluates everything that has to do with the environment. What are the gas that's in the ground? What's the gas? There's a gas. Rate number is a rate on? Rate on. Okay. Oh boy, we're in trouble. All right, we'll get back to Matt later. Go do your job. <laughs> Tipsy is a very high end nail salon. They got a bar. You can't get your nails done on Amazon. And look who's coming out now. He definitely needs a facial. I think it's a great place and a great area in great condition. We gotta sit down, think about the good, the bad, and if there's any ugly. Make sure we understand the deal. When you get into a complicated deal like this, you gotta understand it. You gotta understand the leases. You know, they have what they call exclusive uses, prohibited uses, restricted uses, all these different types of things where if you got a burger joint, you can't rent to another burger joint. Uh, we could just open up a juice bar. We can sell boba teas out of here. You got boba? You said we have boba tea here already, right? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, because this would kill it for Boba. Okay, so there's all these different interactions with working in between tenants. And you gotta make sure as the landlord that you, you know, put that puzzle piece that that other tenant has to be the right fit for this puzzle. You want your tenants to thrive. So that's a big concern we have. And there's some empty space here that needs to be looked at. Can you fit a Tesla through there? This would make a great Tesla showroom. I don't know. That fountain looks pretty pissy to me. That thing should be shooting up higher. What do you want me to look at on the inside of the bank? What do you want me to do and go in there and look at there? Go in the vault. I mean, you want me to scope the place out? I mean. I want you to go in the vault. I mean, okay, so when I walked into the lash place, there was five or six people getting their lashes done. When I walked into the barbershop, there was like eight to nine guys in the chairs. Okay, so there's people here. It's really not that big of a parcel when you look at it. There's a lot of stores, but there's really not a lot of parking. That's why we need to know what are we entitled to use in that garage? How many spaces? Apartment complex owns the road and the parking garage. 
Does that mean that we don't get these parking spaces? All They have three different contracts, okay? There's a cleaning contract for this one. There's a cleaning, cleaning, uh, maintenance, 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 landscape, landscape, landscape. There's That's how it is. It's three like buildings we're buying. Mine. So where's the garbage cans for this building? Where does the property stop and where does the property start? No, your landscaper seems to be doing a great job. He lives right back here. Okay, good. So My own father, I'm asking him to smoke. Hey, and uh, don't blame me. Ben didn't tell you we flew in today. The last minute. He did not. I'm sorry. And you drove over here, huh? He forgot. He didn't tell you. I, I ratted you out. All these years, and I don't even deserve a phone call. Out of all these wells, I have found one. So why are there wells here to begin with? Can you explain that to me? There used to be uh, two 3,000 gallon diesels. There was a farm. So there was a farm here. It had underground storage tanks. So we're going to need to know whether or not they're in the program, a cleanup program. If you're in a cleanup, you're going to be able to find that out, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you probably find already know either. that. It's just I'm not at the office right I now. So why are they putting three more wells in? Because they could not locate the other two wells. That's why we brought the environmental guy here. I don't know about wells. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, it's a good place, a good neighborhood. We like it. It's a good fit for our 1031. Very low management. We're not going to change nothing here. We're just going to keep running the way they ran it this guy built the place that's what he does he builds them he gets them filled he operates them and then he sells them to people like us we come in and hopefully get a decent return on our investment and that's how the games play all right normally when we purchase a property and we utilize all our 1031 money into purchasing a new property at a later date after we maybe came in fine-tuned things fix it up a little stabilize the asset then we would elect to take a refinance and get some of that money out. But maybe we should wait till we have a purpose for the money. Because if we borrow that money, we're gonna be paying probably close to 6% interest on it. So if we can't go out and take that money and put it into something that's gonna get us far more than that 6%, then it doesn't pay. And if it don't make sense, it ain't making dollars. Go to bidmountain.com slash shop and so with Ben. Why? Because you'll be able to get me on the phone. Who better do you know to call? Hey, it'd make a great gift. Maybe it's somebody's birthday. Maybe somebody needs a kick in the ass. Get me on the phone. I'll set them straight for you. Adios, amigos.